Hello and welcome back to Forza Horizon 5 with another Baja build with the RX3 cross cart thing. Yeah. Because my logic is if you want to beat an open wheeler in the form of the Maserati, why not use an open wheeler? Fight fire with fire only instead of a, you know, 1930s indie car, it's a cross cart rally raid thingy. They're pretty much the same. Now, this is middle of A class when we put everything on it, so we don't have a crazy amount. And our tire sizes are not very big. Man, did it say. No, that was only two, four, fives. Okay, I thought I said three, four, fives for a second. I was like, holy cow. We also can't do very much in terms of that, so we might as well. I guess just put all this on. There's not really much room for upgrades, as it turns out. We also have no arrow, which is not ideal. And we are, and the stock engine is not powerful. Like, it is powerful enough, but it's pretty much maxed out. So I do that, and then that. There we go. Okay. Can we sneak anything else on? No. Okay. So that is our build. It's not very powerful at all. However, it weighs just 1,000 pounds. 270 horsepower and 1,000 pounds is not bad. And it has more aero than the Maserati. I have no clue how this is going to go. There's only one way to find out, though. Okay, we are here at our racetrack, still trying to beat the Maz, right? 226-4. This is unknown territory. We've never had anything like this before. It has had some gear ratio tweaks just to give it a chance of a higher top speed, although it's still not very impressive. I don't know if we'll reach it because the gears are so crazy short. But we're gonna give it a go. It does have some advantages, mainly the fact that it's lighter than a pebble. However, it also has some disadvantages, mainly no front arrow, and I'm not expecting it to be very fast in a straight line. But I also have no clue how it's going to handle the bumps, because it is so light, it might just get bounced around. And it's a mid-engine short wheelbase thing, so, you know, it could also have MG Metro Syndrome, which is never a good syndrome to have. But we shall see. We've never had a vehicle like this before. The closest we've had is probably the Bronco R, although that's just because that's an off-road vehicle. Like this one. Albeit very different styles. Chucking a little sideways. That was actually a good line through there. We carried a lot of speed. That was a surprisingly good line. Completely, I mean, naturally. Completely. Oi! Well, that's a technique. I was expecting a little slide in the back end just swung around. You have to try MG Metro Syndrome. It's definitely got the Metro Syndrome. <laughs> if you're not aware, the 6R4, the Metro Rally Car from Group B, very short wheelbase, notorious for being difficult to manage. And yeah, this thing, it's a similar boat. Okay, we're away off course. Luckily, we sort of stopped dead there on the landing, so we didn't go too far off course. It's not going to be... I mean, it's not a great lap time, let's put it that way. But it's not the worst. So... Uh, I will say, I don't really feel very confident with this vehicle. I know it's the first run, and there have been numerous examples in this series so far, where the first two runs have been awful, I don't like them, and then the third run just blows everything out of the water. The Porsche Taycan comes to mind that I hated how that vehicle drove. It was about 10 seconds off the pace near enough. And if you look at it now, it's second on the board. I turned it in too early. <laughs> I'm, I'm, it's also, I'm probably not that concentrated right now. I need to get in the zone. But, um, yes. Just because a vehicle sucks on the first two runs, it's not mean it sucks completely. I've learned that now. 
and this has an awful lot of acceleration. If I can use it without going all over the place, which I might not. I mean, it's not a great run. However, it is on par with the Forsberg 280, and that was a very, like, C-minus sort of run is how I would describe that. It's passing because I didn't really miss any checkpoints. I didn't crash. However, it was very sloppy and not really all that good. I just have to get used to the vehicle, I have to get used to it as much as I can. That's usually why the third run is the best in these cases. It's because on vehicles that are difficult to use, the more experience, the better. So, cross cart, I'm hoping, is one of those examples where I can get the hang of it without having too much problem. I'm leaving third. Turning. It does get understeer. There is noticeable understeer just because I would imagine the lack of front arrow just not allowing the front end to turn in as much as I'm used to. Now we're going to break late or break early and turn in late. There we go. There we go. That was a better line through there. And then we get on the break. So you have to break earlier than I expected. Some of you guys, it doesn't have that front turn in. Maybe if I. Again, if I get used to it more, I can... Ah, it's so weird because it feels very light. But it doesn't drive very light. It, it feels like accelerating. You can feel that even though it has less than 300 horsepower, it's carrying mega speed up this hill. Wait. There's that hairpin causing issues with the short wheelbase. And it, it feels very light, but on the turns... Certainly in the slower turns, it does not feel like it. it feels like a very heavy bar. It feels more like the Land Rover, which is weird because the Land Rover, apart from the Bronco, is the heaviest vehicle we have ever run. And this is, well, by far the light is even lighter than the Maserati, so... I'm not so sure. I don't think this is going to beat the Maserati, just based on front-end grip, but... Bear in mind, the Maserati also did not have aero at all. It had no aero, no front, no rear. So, I think so a lot. <sighs> this section really hurts. The rocks, normally not a problem for vehicles, but in a vehicle this light and with this much understeer, in a section that requires precision like that, it does hurt it. It does feel like it's getting slowed down by the rocks. If all of a sudden those rocks are not a problem, but in this case, the foliage weighs almost as much as the car in some cases, I'm willing to bet. That makes a difference. I didn't think about that when I first started off, but yeah, driving the vehicle, that makes sense. Regardless, this is going to be a better run. Okay. It is going to be a better run once I don't do that like an idiot. And... I, I think there's definite room for improvement. Don't go that way. It's just a matter of, can I get use of the car? Can I get it right? Oh. You see what I mean about the whole... Not, doesn't feel fast, but it actually is. Yeah, it's second on our leaderboard. It's only 1.7 seconds slower than the Maserati. If I get a perfect run, absolutely spotless with this vehicle... I might just be able to do that. But that's a big if. It's already second on our leaderboard. But, um... That does mean I have to shave off 1.7 seconds. Which is a lot. That pretty much means going as hard as I can, and yet as smooth as I can all at the same time. That's no easy feat. Let's make sure it gets timing right. There we go. You got the launch spot on, and I didn't get the launch right the first time. I also need to get my gear spot on to get the maximum acceleration. If I'm going to go for that record, I really have to beat it, because that Maserati third run, I will be honest, was pretty much flawless in my book. There we go. Maybe I should have left it in third. I don't really know. 
just use the handbrake a little bit there to get that front end turn. This does not have the same front end grip as the Mazda. I think the Mazda I did have bigger tires. And of course, it had the engine in the front, so it had the weight pushing down on it, if nothing else. And we carried mega speed through there. That was a really good run. We got the, we got the line perfect. And we got the line for the hairpin much better. Use that uh, Metro Syndrome to our advantage. Try and get that front end turn as quickly as possible by using the short wheelbase. I've always said as a disadvantage, use it as an advantage and brake late because of the lightweight. There we go. Flat out. Thank you. We're a little bit all over the place. I got traction there. You sort of see it just grip. I don't think we're going to be beating the the Maserati on this run, unfortunately. Simply because it wasn't a perfect run. Really, you can just see the front end not really reacting very well to that section. It really hates that middle section a lot. It's very unstable is the word I would use. It's very shaky. And it's also not very great around here simply because there's debris. There's stuff in the way and it doesn't like that. It struggles to deal with that because it is so heavy. So you do actually have to follow the course 100% or else you're going to get slowed down because it doesn't have the weight behind it. I mean, that's a way to take the hairpin. That wasn't necessarily the fastest line, I don't think, but you know, I'm going to use it. I'll use what I can get. Carry the speed, and it is across the line. I don't know what that was. Was it any good? Oh, it was faster, but it wasn't fast enough. It was faster than... Oh. I shaved off about four tenths of a second, three tenths of a second with that one. Okay. Oh, 227.8. That Maserati is proving to be a very tough benchmark, but the Sierra came close. It's the closest anything's ever come, and yet saying that, it is still 1.4 seconds slower than the Maserati. It's a, almost a second clear, about six tenths of a second to be more specific, clear of the Datsun. Those, the open wheelers are in a league of their own, which is so weird. Because they're the only vehicles without Forza Aero apart from the Bronco. And yet they're leading one too. So I think the only logical thing you can conclude from this is that Forza Aero is terrible. <laughs> no, I, I think it's just the vehicles and their sheer grip. And smoothness, if you can get these vehicles to be smooth, they're just unbeatable. And I think the lightweight helps, because both these vehicles are less than 2,000 pounds, and no other vehicle on this list, short of the roly-poly Renault, is sub-2,000 pounds. So that does have a key element, is that as long as you can carry the speed more and more. This definitely loses out to the Maserati because it doesn't have the front end turning. However, it's 300 plus pounds lighter than the Maserati with 100 less horsepower. So the power weight ratio is similar, probably leaning towards the Sierra, but the Sierra does have rear aero, which probably helps it a bit more and sort of balances out the power disparity. Either way, it's another example of a car I'm not really a big fan of, and yet it's done very well. So it joins the ranks of the Maserati and the Porsche Taycan as vehicles that I'm not a big fan of to drive, but are bloody fast. Anyway, that'll be it for this episode of Forza Horizon 5. I'll be back with more.